are Amy family. I am Chris. I am your home gamer dad and I have a horrible pirate accent. I apologize for that so so much. Uh, welcome to another episode of why I backed a dive into Kickstarter crowdfunded uh, game found type projects that I find personally interesting and that I want to share with you. Today Grab your treasure, grab your weaponry, maybe grab a cannon or two if you can fit it into your pockets or whatever, because we're sinking! A pirate's dilemma. I've seen people talk about we're sinking since earlier this year, I think around Gamma and everything, when a lot of the influencers were going through and informing us about this game that's coming out where it's a three to six player game with has like a... And they say trader mechanic, but after looking at it, I don't think that's really true. Uh, but I'll explain that as I go through and everything. Um, but the main point of the game is, is you're on a ship, and as the game goes on, the different portions of the ship go away, and it's literally sinking below the water. You can either fight the creature or whatever it is that's causing the ship to sink, or you can collect as much loot as you can and jump as the ship sinks, but be careful, if you carry too much, you're going to drown, and whoever has the lightest load will actually win. So why don't we walk the plank over to the Kickstarter page and actually see what type of dilemma these pirates have been put in. You scallywags. That's a fun word. I love it. I love this art. It just looks so cool. You got a really cool purple octopus style tentacle there. You got some gnarly looking skeleton coming up from that. I love the artwork on this. The artwork is what makes it and the subtle humor within everything also is just absolutely amazing. This is one of the reasons why I backed this game. Now, there are things that I wish that it was that it doesn't have in it, but I'll talk about that later. But overall speaking, just the table presence of this game is what sold it for me hands down. Anyway, we're Sinking, the game that was designed by Joseph Frederick and is produced by Ludimus Games. We have right here a Kickstarter, and it has, as of the point of this recording, 22 days to go. So when this is posted, uh, it'll probably be more around like the 17, 18 marks. He's still got about two, two and a half weeks to go. It hasn't fully hit its funding yet, but it's like 75% of the way there. Guaranteed it's going to hit the funding, and then hopefully it'll start really pushing out some stretch goals. The more and more this game is talked about, and I've seen this game, like when it first went live, there wasn't much talked about, but now you'll be able to find a playthrough, you're able to find other reviews and other people talking about it, and generally, it's all positive. It's all positive things that have to be said about this game from the influencers that managed to get it early, which is awesome, which is exactly what I was hoping for as I was anticipating this Kickstarter to finally, you know, go live. So before I get into anything else, why don't we go ahead and watch the video? I kind of like these like preview videos and everything uh, for all these, you know, just gives us something to look at and a little, little bit of a background of what uh, you can expect from the project. Ah, back there on the high go, go, go. seas after another I love the prosperous big treasure too. haul. Can't wait to count all our precious oh, no. gems. Oh no! Uh, what was that? Ooh. Captain, we're sinking! So cool! Captain? Captain? Uh, all right, I guess then. Congratulations! Mm. You've just become the new first mate this just of makes our motley crew of uh, really three to six pirates. The good news is we have a ship full of glorious booty, gems, treasure chests, and all sorts of useful items. The bad news is, where well, we seem to be under attack, and water is leaking in fast. There is much to do, from bucketing water out, patching breaches, or firing cannons. I, I see you eyeing that treasure. Don't Who even think about I grabbing the loot for yourself. Too late. She took too much water. We're going down. This is done so well. In Look we're sinking, quality. win by either defeating the enemy and having the most loot at the end of the game, or keep your pockets light and abandon ship, leaving your greedy crew members to sink to Davy Jones's locker. Will you work together to perform urgent tasks or lie to manipulate for your most own likely selfish lie. We are pilots, after all. Four different horrible enemies to choose from. Find hidden loot and upgrades. And featuring a magnificent ship every captain would be proud of. Very much agree with if that. they can keep it afloat, that is. Gah. So what say you? Will you save the ship or save yourself? 
We're sinking! A pirate's dilemma. Plunder now on Kickstarter. I don't even have to know how the game plays and that thing actually gets me excited. Ah, oh, man. I'm also a sucker for pirates. Don't get me wrong. I, I absolutely love uh, just the theme of pirates and everything like that. You know, Pirates of the Caribbean and things along that way. Anywho, the story of We're Sinking. Yes, uh, Joseph Frederick uh, Ludibus Games. That's, that's exactly what I said for just to make sure. All right, we're going down and fight we must so we don't drown. Yes, so uh, as you can see here, we're sinking. Uh, Pirate's Dilemma is labeled as a semi-cooperative survival game. Awesome. On the high seas filled with action, backstabbing booty, and lots of water. This is fact because, of course, the ship is sinking as you're going down, taking on water, and one of the things you possibly need to do is get, you know, the water out of it and everything. Uh, I'll talk about the influencers as we go on and everything. Uh, so some background more of it if you want to read here. It's, again, this is, I just love the art. The artwork on this is so cool. It's simple and yet effective, you know, whenever you see this. You get the true feeling of what, you know, the, the on the high seas and everything, the storm. Oh, God, the big things are coming to get you. Uh, something lurking down in the deep here. Creepy, creepy, creepy. Um, as far as the game goes, uh, three to six players not my ideal game in terms of player count. I hope or maybe wish at some point in this, um, maybe if this does well enough, there'll be a two player mode or a single player mode to this. I don't know how you can do that because you have to lie, you know, in the ways of getting, you know, around certain things. Uh, but I, as a solo player, I prefer that. And then really it's just my wife and me playing these. So our max player count most of the time is two. So I don't know how much this would actually hit the table. Uh, but if it does, it's a simple game to teach and fun for up to six people, as you can see. Plus, the playtime isn't really that bad. 45 to 90 minutes. That's a pretty standard game nowadays. And I think this fits perfectly within that time frame. It doesn't overstay its welcome. And there's enough to do every round to keep people interested. And, you know, just push you on to the next thing. And work towards whatever final goal you happen to be going for. Because... You're going to switch those goals quite often as you play. All right, moving right along. Sinking ship. Watch your ship sink as tension rises. That's a little bit of a tongue twister there I'm running with. Um, probably one of the coolest things about this game is literally, literally the ship comes apart and will sink as you play it. It's, everything I heard about this game from way back in the day up until when this is released has all been about the table presence of it. And the ship is a standout piece. And this is just a prototype. All of these images you see here, though probably some of them are pretty close to finalized, are all prototypes. This could be made even better by the time the final game comes out. But the concept is still the same. You remove a bottom piece as you keep going down, and down, down, down you go. You got your player interaction, where you determine what you're going to play, but you don't tell everybody what you're going to play. And then, of course, there's a lot of replayability, because you get to play as a new character every time. You get to go up against new adversaries, and then, of course being the nature of a deck game, you're going to shuffle it so things are always going to come out in a different order. How to play. The game has one of two different endings. You can either save the ship if the crew can manage to defeat the enemy before the ship sinks. The player with the highest point value in their hand is the winner. So that means you would have them, who generally whoever has the most cards in their hand, uh, each card will have a specific value point on them. So you just add that up. Whoever has the most points wins. That's if you beat the enemy. However, if you do not beat the enemy and the ship actually sinks, the pirate with the fewest cards in their hand is light enough to hop on the lifeboat and escape. Keep in mind the story behind this game is the captain of the ship took one of the two lifeboats and just bolted, so there's only one lifeboat left. It can't hold, you know, any more than like one person and a very light load. So, one one hand the more cards you have in your hand in order, you know, if the enemy is defeated, then you win. On the other, if your ship's going down, you need to dump the most important things because whoever has the least amount of cards in their hands is going to be the winner. And I believe it's a tie whoever has the most valuable stuff. So you got to be very pick and choosy about what it is that you're bringing with you. One of the playthroughs that I watched with this talked about the duties checklist, which is pretty much your order of operations when you play around. Very nicely set up, easy to read and understandable. And this is passed to every person at the beginning of every round. So it's a new first mate. And then, yeah, you just kind of go from there. You're rolling the dice to determine what the enemy does. Your ship fills up with water with these water cards. Now, the water cards may also have gems on them. So ideally, what you're going to do is every turn is the ship's going to fill up with water. 
new items are going to be discovered, the enemy is going to attack. So those are the first big three things that happen before anybody does anything. Next, you're going to discuss and take actions. You're going to use your dials, and on the dial are one of four symbols, whether it be chucking out water, looting whatever valuables you happen to see, patching holes and fixing cannons, or firing cannons that have already been fixed. You're going to determine what you're going to do on your little dial, and you're going to put it face down in any one of those four rows. Once the round starts and everyone has chosen, they're all going to flip over, and depending on what you pick, you may go to a different row, because as you see here, they go to different areas. So you're lying about where you're going. You may be like, hmm, I love that treasure. That looks really good. Oh, I'm going to bucket out some water. Don't worry, everyone. I got it. I got it. Bam, I'm going to go to get the treasure while you're all doing something else. You know, you're a pirate. <laughs> this is what you do. You lie, you cheat, and you kind of just do whatever it is that you want to do, but at the same time, you don't want to go down to Davy Jones' locker, so you still got to patch the ship. So that's where the semi-cooperative work, uh, you know, gameplay comes about. Play your way. Basically, you're just going to be playing however it is that you see fit as you go through. You know, yes, you're going to be working together with everybody else to make sure, you know, to increase your personal chances of survival. But at the same time, your objectives are going to change continuously as you go through the game. Because one time you may want some treasure, treasure, treasure. Hey, look, we're doing all right. We're beating the, the boss. But then all of a sudden the monster is going to come back at you and hit you hard. And you're like, uh oh, I need to do something else. What else can I do? Toss out some cards to make sure that I can get on the life raft because it looks like we're going down. But that's that's the gist of the game. And, you know, watching a playthrough of it, it looked so much fun. Oh, man. What's in the box? Let's see what do you actually get for your value. $49 base pledge. Normally it costs $55 retail, so that's a pretty good. You save some money there. Not bad at all. Um, <laughs> this is my second uh, back, uh, Kickstarter that I backed this month. I'm actually going to be having three of them. Uh, but the good thing on my end, uh, I don't have much to play with in terms of my funds for these things, but a lot of these are fairly cheap. Uh, the Terraforming Mar Mars I did was pretty good. This is actually going to be a little bit more expensive than this because I'm doing the the one with the expansion, uh, and then the next one isn't going to be that bad either, and I'll explain that later. Um, what do you get for $49? So you get, of course, the box, you get the rule book, you get the fantastic, remarkable mini ship that comes apart into various sections and everything, and is actually like an intricate part of the game in terms of a visual of watching your ship go down. Uh, of course, you get the game board where all your different things lay out and everything. You get Four enemy cards, which we're going to talk about later because I believe they're further down here. Six playable characters, uh, each one of the dials in association with a, their color, the various dice for the bad guys, the general dice, and then the cannon dice where you use to shoot everyone. So a lot of dice, 24 dice, your first mate card, your chest. So the way that the ship goes is these treasure chests get shuffled together and then they get placed in between the different layers. So whenever a new layer comes off, treasure chests are found. And then as an action in the game, you can actually go and open a chest and gain whatever valuables are in it. So I think that's a really cool mechanic to not only incorporate within the design of the ship, like more than just seeing going down, but also whenever the ship goes down, you could possibly get something, which is awesome. And of course, all of your cards, you know, your, your water cards. So the water cards will either be clear water where you just get rid of it or various items, your various breaches, how much water is coming into the ship and how many people it takes in order to fix that breach. Uh, so this way water doesn't keep coming in. Player aids can never go wrong with a good player aid. Cannons, which you're going to use in order to fight back against the monster. And then the threshold sheet This is pretty much telling you once you hit five water cards, you move on to the next threshold and you lose a section of your ship. So whenever you pass a threshold, that's when you lose a part of your ship. So that's really cool. And then apparently the insert of the box itself is perfectly designed for this. So this way everything fits nice and snug. Gotta love that as well, where everything has a place and they actually take uh, the time to figure out where it all goes so it's not rattling around like crazy. Love it, love it, love it. Meeting the baddies. These are some of the villains that you're going to be going up with. The base game has four. There is an expansion to the game that has two more. Uh, the Kraken is a one skull out of four. Pretty simply put, you know, he comes up and he, he attacks you um, from what I've seen, just some basic stuff that he does or causes you to draw more water cards, which is kind of their attacks anyway. 
I guess he, every creature has unique cards that might be shuffled into the water deck or something along that way. So him, I guess it's various musical instruments and maybe that'll quell his attack for a particular round. Because if you can get through it around without being attacked by a boss, that's fantastic. <laughs> the the skull sayers they have these uh, amulets uh, that go into the decks and everything that they're after uh, of course you know your pirates found them and took them so now they're being hunted by scary skeleton pirates you know pirates of the caribbean wise you can't you can't go wrong with that we have the sirens here a popular mythological beast from uh, you know pirate lore and everything you know these maidens that sing songs and drag men to their death of course they're going to be going up to our ship and trying to kill you uh, protect your ears from tempting tunes and show the sirens their true self. So things that get go into the deck. And then finally, the shark, or as they call it in here, they go the megalodon. <laughs> Terrifying creature that kind of just comes to your boat and knocks it away Jaws style. Uh, feed the megalodon fish chum to distract it. So again, probably ways of keeping it off of your ship. Oh boy. And here we go. Some add-ons. Of course, there's already a mini expansion for it. Why not? You have the Navy. You're pirates. You're being hunted by the law. So, of course, they're going to come at you. And then ghosts. Because if you have skeleton, you got to have spirits. So, ghosts are going to come and probably try to freak you out and everything. And then you can also get a box sleeve to go over it in order to prevent any type of, like, weird expansions that happen throughout the course. Plus, it's actually a really cool-looking sleeve. Now... I personally am not going to be getting this sleeve. I opted to just go with the base game and the Sword and Souls expansion. Uh, most of my stuff is flat, so I'm not going to really worry about that. Uh, it just saves me a little bit of money as well that I know that I can apply towards something else. Stretch goal wise, you know, it's really just the basics right now. Basic funding, uh, just a little quick preview of some new stuff, uh, linen finish, low box uh, UV. Um, I'm sure that once this video goes up, this project will be fully funded already, and then more stretch goals will be announced. So I'm looking forward to seeing what could possibly come from here. You can expect more treasure cards, you know, different things like that. I would love to see even an additional enemy, you know, just pop up here and everything. That would really be cool. Or even another pirate, a seventh pirate that you could possibly play as. That would be awesome. But you guys got to go out there and fund this project in order to be able to do that. Uh, in addition, there are social goals, which more may even show up as time goes on. Uh, right now, uh, it's the Facebook group and the Instagram group. Definitely head on over there and follow that stuff as well in order to unlock more stuff for this because the one thing I love about Kickstarters and whatnot is all of the additional stuff that you find in here that go into the base game that you normally wouldn't be able to get in retail. To me, that's the stuff that makes backing Kickstarters worth it. All of the cool new and original stuff that you would find here as opposed to what you would only be able to find at like your friendly go local game store. Coming near the end, we have some video previews of this. So uh, Quackalope got themselves a, a copy that they want to talk about and they show off Man vs. Meeple. You know, it's our family plays games. That was really fun. I enjoyed watching that one. And then there's a full playthrough currently at uh, Tantrum House. Uh, just a, a bunch of different people out here talking about uh, the game, showing it off, telling you their opinions and everything. And like I said, everyone's very positive about this. And that makes it feel even more uh, like secure in my mind of why I'm backing this. Because I knew it was going to be awesome. I had a feeling it was going to be a great game. Uh, and just to have that verification from all the influences and everything saying, you know, it's a beautiful game, it works, everything about it is great and whatnot, uh, it is just awesome to see and awesome to uh, be able to go to. So, why did I fully back this uh, when I am more of a solo player and really I can't do uh, three or more players? One, as I said before, uh, the art and the actual table presence of this, you know, the ship really does help back my decision about being able to get this. I love the way the game looks. I think it's going to play awesome. I think the ship is absolutely fantastic. And I can see me pulling this out on a random game night whenever we have more people over and being like, all right, mateys, let's go for some treasure. Um, I'm not a fan of like the lying mechanic and everything, but after watching it played, I understand it more. It's not so much that there's a traitor in the mix, it's every pirate for themselves. You know, you have your own agenda in the game as you go through, as a pirate should. 
Um, so everything you do is really just to make sure that you win. And even though you're working together with everyone, as it's put multiple times, there can only be one winner. And I would like to make sure that's me. And what's fun also is the two different ending conditions where they're so opposite of each other, where it's like, all right, let's go ahead and either take down the enemy as fast as we can, or, oh no, our boat's sinking. Toss, 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 toss. Who gets to the light boat first? And what's fun is, I think as you play it and you watch how other people play, you'll see their hand. If they have a lot of cards in their hand, they're like, oh no, I need to do something. Uh, I'm going to go attack the uh, the Kraken. And at that point, I may be like, well, it's too bad for you. I'm going to make sure that you miss with those cannons or I'm going to make sure you do something else because I have two cards in my hand and I'm going to survive instead of you. So it, it's a little cutthroat, I believe, but I think it's done in a way where it's fun and enjoyable and, you know, just just whimsical, I guess would be the case, you know, just by the way that a lot of the uh, the art is and everything. It's so bright and cheery and yet really nasty too. And I really want to look through some of these cards and like know more about them and what they do and whatnot. So this way I can see the different options that you have throughout the course of the game. So there you have it, everybody. We're Sinking, a Pirate's Dilemma, a game for three to six players where you can either choose to fight against the giant monster that's attacking your ship, or you can grab as much loot as you can, or as little as you can, really, uh, knowing that your ship is going down and get to that lifeboat and zip on out of there before everybody else. Key point to this game is the actual ship itself because it literally sinks as you continue to play. A fantastic feature that's more than just a gimmick because they actually utilize it for like treasure holds and everything like that and is also a really cool idea in general. I can't wait to see the final version of that ship because the prototype looks fantastic. Let me know what you think of We're Sinking Down in the comments below and, you know, your opinions on it and everything. If you think it's going to be a good game or whatever, and if it will make it to your table more often than not. Thank you guys so much for checking this out. I will see you in the next one. Take care of yourselves and each other. We're a family forever, gaming together. Even if we're pirates out for ourselves, we're still going to make sure that the others, you know, maybe have a life vest or something like that. Take a little jewel for the road while I take the, uh, the ship and get on out of here. Oh boy. All right. This is going to be a fun one. You guys have a good one. I'll see you in the next one. Later.